Hey y'all, welcome back to Rated RPG, your number one channel for gaming news and commentary. We are talking about Square Enix. Oh, Square Enix, who we love so much because they are giving us Final Fantasy VII, which at this point is the end of February, so I'm going to just call it about a month away. Eey, so excited. But here's the thing. I have complained more than once about the Xbox Series X new console and Microsoft's policy when it comes to how they are handling cross-gen titles. They have said everything on their platform will be cross-gen, which in my opinion restricts the game developers to making sure that whatever they make at least will run on the last generation of hardware. Now, I know Microsoft's shooting for a lot of cloud-based stuff, and they're like, we just want you to be a software, we want to be a software-based service now. I get that. That's their business model. But that doesn't change the fact that there are limitations of past-gen hardware. And I've said, this is going to affect how developers do things. Whether or not you consider that a bad thing is up to you. Now, Square Enix, we love them, right? They've done some horrible things to us in the past. They've done some pretty crappy games. But overall, it's a nostalgia factor and just the fact that they are working hard on Final Fantasy VII. And up till now, it's looked great. Everybody I've heard from who got their hands on at it, hands on it at uh, E3 says it plays great. And that's fantastic. Here's the thing, though. Final Fantasy VII and... Uh, any future games that Square Enix says they're going to do are all going to be cross-gen titles. To me, that's a mistake. Next-gen exclusivity is something that has to be done. I want to see game companies trying to push things to the limit as soon as possible. Saying for the time being we're going to make everything cross-gen means for the time being you're having to develop your game for, to meet the minimum standards of last gen. Now, I hear a lot of folks saying, hey, don't knock this. It's a very pro-consumer move. And you know what? I agree. This is an extremely pro-consumer move. And in most cases, I would say 99% of the time, everything I espouse on this channel is about things needing to be pro-consumer, how companies need to be pro-consumer. But I'm going to step out on this one and say this is pro-consumer, but it's not pro-gamer because the consumer is not going to have to buy uh, two copies of Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VIII or Trials of the Series of Mana or the Saga Sun whatever next Final Fantasy whatever Square Enix game because they can either just buy the PlayStation 4 version or they can buy the PlayStation 5 version. That's great for the average consumer, but for the hardcore gamers, the people who are going to be getting these games day one, the people who are going to be getting season passes, buying DLC as soon as it comes out, the people who buy these games no matter what, they are, myself included, we are going to want to see what we're paying for. We are going to want to see what the next gen is going to look like from the get-go kicked into overdrive and unfortunately i personally feel like if everyone is developing with last gen's benchmarks still in mind then that's we're not going to see that for some time and whether or not playstation decides to do the whole everything has to be cross-gen I don't really think it's going to matter because Xbox, who is a big player in the industry deciding it, may end up making that decision for all the third-party developers, irrespective, irregardless, regardless, whatever, of PlayStation's decision, which we haven't heard yet because we still have diddly squat about the PlayStation 5. So, I'm very conflicted about this. On one hand, I get the pro-consumer thing. On the other hand... To me, this isn't pro-gamer. So, try to solve that conundrum. Putting that aside, uh, we have some good news. And that is that the Final Fantasy VII sequel, Part 2, whatever you want to call it, according to producers, will not be delayed in any way, shape, or form by the pushback 
of the Final Fantasy VII Remake release date. Does that actually mean anything? I don't think so. We don't even know when Final Fantasy VII Part Two was destined to come out. This is just an answer that they gave at a Q&A, and it's like, yay! But at the same time, does it actually mean anything? There's not been any declared release date. We have no idea how long the second game in this uh, episodic release is going to take to make. I assume it'll take a lot it'll take a lot less time than Final Fantasy VII Remake because they didn't have to cancel and scrap all the original development from the original outsourcing studio they did and they can just reuse a lot of the assets. So I assume it's going to take a lot less time. But ultimately this kind of is just a throwaway answer that doesn't matter because yes, great, good. Progress is being made. But on the other hand, they could just make up a release date and we wouldn't even know the difference. Push back a month or not. And I assume that it, this, but even so, I assume the Final Fantasy VII Remake release date being pushed back wouldn't affect it anyway because I'm sure this is kind of like a Lord of the Rings thing going on. They haven't just stopped working on Final Fantasy VII when Remake goes gold. They're probably going to just keep on working on it. Same team, still working on it. This is something that I'm sure that they may even already have stuff for the next game, at least uh, the framework for it built, because, hey, why not? A lot of that stuff is going to get reused in the next game. So that is our Final Fantasy VII update. It is something that is on all of our wish list. It's still topping the Famitsu Most Wanted Game charts, and I would like to get my hands on this game because I needs it. It's in my soul. Alright, so that is our Final Fantasy VII update. Let us know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe! While I continue to dig through Twitter, Reddit, and everywhere else for some Elden Ring news to satisfy some of you fiends out there, because my Elden Ring bump has started to decline. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think. I'll be sure to get back to you with as much news as I can as soon as possible. I'll catch you next time on Rated RPG. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Rated RPG. I appreciate you checking out the channel. Be sure to hit that like button if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications so you can get all the latest updates from Rated RPG.